Hi everyone, and welcome back to part two of our Cabral House Calls. Yesterday, we answered about a half dozen of our community's questions, and we are back today ready to answer yours. So all these questions have come in over the past month to six weeks or so. Uh, questions today are starting with September 18th and moving forward. So if you asked your question before September 18th, it has already been answered. Thank you for writing in, and of course, thank you for all of the support and the listens. So each and every weekend, if you're new to the show, what I do is I open up my document sent by the team of all of the different questions uh, that have come in. And uh, it is my job, it's my pleasure to be able to give people another opinion, a second place to look in order to begin to heal. So that's what we do each and every weekend. No diagnosis, uh, no cures, no treatments provided. What we do is we provide the reason, the why, the root cause, the place to look, the lab to run in order to begin to truly heal at a deep level. So uh, let's get started. I'm excited to answer our community's questions like I do each and every weekend. And um, without further ado, Let's dive into the show. All right. So the first question today is from Joey. Joey says, hello, Dr. Brawl. I have a question about magnesium supplementation. I've never had any signs of magnesium deficiency, cramps or high blood pressure or high sugar or headaches. And my daily magnesium intake is about 600 milligrams. I keep hearing about all the positive effects of magnesium. I tried to supplement with an extra 200 milligrams on top of my daily diet. I've tried magnesium citrate, glycinate, and your full spectrum magnesium. Every time, regardless of the form, after several days, I always develop sleep troubles. After discontinuing, meaning he wakes up in the middle of the night not being able to go back to sleep, after discontinuing magnesium supplementation, my sleep would always return to normal. Do you have any experience of this with your patients? All right, so, Joy, one of the great things about working in private practice for as many years as I have is that we pretty much, I always say this, but we pretty much have seen it all. I mean, there's not a lot we haven't seen. I mean, that's to be honest. So I've come across your issue many times. Is it common? No. Is it normal? No. But I've still seen it, and it's maybe like one out of every thousand people, all right? So it's not, I would say, uncommon. It's just not common either. It's probably not even one out of every thousand. It's probably like one out of every 10,000. So... Here's a couple, there's, there's many reasons why. So 9.9 .9 times out of 10, magnesium is going to help you sleep better. And that's because it relaxes the sympathetic nervous system. So basically it's a break on the sympathetic nervous system. So it helps to then induce the parasympathetic nervous system. Magnesium is also a precursor for GABA. We need GABA as a natural anti-anxiolytic to calm the nerves, right? To help us turn off the mind. That's why magnesium works so great. So there's so many other different reasons why, right? I mean, like without a doubt, it helps to then calm cortisol and then cortisol is going to help produce or it will then allow more melatonin to be produced. I mean, there's again, so many reasons why. However, I will tell you this, a couple times when I've seen people in your position, the product that they actually needed was called CalMag Complete. And the reason why they needed this is that the body actually needs its partner, calcium, which balances then magnesium. So I've always seen it in relation to those two things. There was one time where the person needed more B vitamins, believe it or not. So uh, that was certainly helpful, um, I, most likely because of um, the way that magnesium is processed in the body when it's not in food. So using specific metal, methyl donors helped. So that was certainly helpful, uh, but more, more likely than not, we use a product called CalMag Complete. You take two of those. You can take three if you want at dinner. But again, you'll find the right amount for you. And um, we've seen great success in that. So you can certainly try CalMag Complete, which gives you potentially a better ratio of calcium magnesium. Now, you can run a hair tissue mineral analysis if you'd like to find out more about those calcium magnesium levels or your uh, magnesium sodium levels as well. Believe it or not, there's a relationship there. So it's like, are you taking enough good uh, sodium in from good Himalayan sea salt uh, or uh, Celtic sea salt. All right. Thank you, Joey. Carries up. Hi, Dr. Paul. I live in Central Valley of California. We have been called the breadbasket of the world, but are also known as the number one worst region for particle pollution in the United States, according to the American Lung Association. I know you won't read this question for at least another six weeks, but my home is currently surrounded by the Creek Fire. My family is under an evacuation and warning in this wild Fire has burned 250,000 acres of our backyard. It's raining ash and the air quality is horrible. I was wondering what you recommend to stay healthy during these difficult times. The air quality is usually bad here. 
but now it's on another level and it's bothering people without underlying respiratory issues. My husband is a first responder and works 16 hour shifts outdoors. Is there anything he can do to protect himself and his lungs while working in such a toxic environment? Some of my family members' symptoms include burning eyes, congestion, shortness of breath, headache, general fatigue. Thank you for all the information or products you may recommend. The only recommendations we received is to stay inside. We could all use the help all the help we can get living in the Valley. Thank you for being you, Carrie. Thank you. I appreciate that. So yeah, certainly there's a lot we can do. So this is one of those times where um, try ahead of time to get yourself a couple of N95 masks just to kind of keep in your back pocket for emergencies. So N95 masks will allow you to filter out pollutants um, if you do have to go outside. It's not a fail safe, but when worn properly and fitted properly, um, it's very, very helpful. And I do recommend that for your husband as a first responder, an N95 mask. And of course, he can wear a pair of goggles as well over the eyes. It might seem excessive, but certainly uh, we know that most of the particulate is going to get through your nose and your mouth and then a little bit in through your eyes as well. So if you're protecting your eyes and you're protecting your nose and mouth with the mask, well, you're doing a really good job. And then when you get home, of course, you can get right into the shower and throw your clothes right in the uh washing machine. So and that's for people outside. Now, in terms of being inside, yeah, absolutely stay inside, but also get an air filter. So you need a really good quality air filter. I've recommended two that I absolutely stand by. I use both. My air doctor is literally uh, four feet away from me right now. And I have the IQ air as well. Uh, they're both fantastic. And again, I, I could recommend those for sure. Um, okay, so those are two things. And then, of course, um, sauna is going to help with the detox. Uh, so as much sauna as you can do. Again, uh, normal, right? We're not going overboard. 20 minutes, 30 minutes a day. And then um, when this is over, because it, it will hopefully be over soon, it's over. So then I would do a 7, 14, or 21-day detox to really help ramp up that liver detox. So, And keep those cruciferous vegetables up, right? Keep the smoothies up for the whole family. Keep your cruciferous vegetable, that intake up high as well, your broccoli, your cauliflower, and all those other great veggies, all right? Thank you, Carrie, and, and best of luck uh, to you and your family. Mo's up. Hey, Dr. Brawl. It's Mo again. LOL. My question today is about the estrogen balance product you have. Do you ever recommend that for men to use? And if so, on what occasions? As always, thank you so much for your time and knowledge. Greatly appreciate it. Mo, thank you for writing in. I recommend estrogen balance quite often, believe it or not, for men. I recommend it when I run labs like the stress hormones, mood and metabolism lab that every man and every woman should run. And if I find a male's estrogen, their estradiol, um, above a 1.5, then I recommend that product because I don't want to see that testosterone convert into estrogen at that high of a level. Um, I also recommend the estrogen balance when I see issues with prostate or hair loss. Those are other reasons why. Um, I use estrogen balance with men if they're starting to get a little bit of gynecomastia with testosterone boosting products. Um, yeah, so those are all the main reasons. And so, yeah, it's a great product for both men and women. Keep in mind, it's not a woman's product. Men have estrogen as well. And the products inside are herbal in nature. It's um, DIM and it's I3C. So natural extracts and, and they work great. So hopefully that helps. And I, um, again, uh, typically when men are converting higher levels to estrogen too, uh, we need to look at the underlying root cause and we certainly want to ramp up the detox in the body too. Decrease stress ramp up detox. All right, Sarah's up. Let's see. Oh, we're doing great on time. Flying right through these questions. Sarah's up. Hi, Dr. Brawl. Thank you for taking the time to answer my question. I really, really appreciate all you do. And you have helped me learn so much. Both my daughters suffer from or suffer with croup every year in the winter in the UK. Their breathing gets so bad, we have to call the ambulance and then they are normally given medication. They take a multi, DHA, and probiotic daily. Should I increase vitamin C or other vitamin uh, during the periods of the illness? If so, what do you recommend for a two- and five-year-old? Also, does the medication have any side effects, or do my children need to take extra vitamins, probiotics, if taking it? Okay. So let's just go here and here, and we'll go right over here. Okay, so basically, you are taking a glucocorticoid. All right, so 
Um, we don't have to, it absolutely can affect the gut. So I don't want to say that it can't. So for sure, um, it, it, the higher levels of the anti-inflammatory, the corticosteroid your children are taking, um, can affect the nervous system, can affect the adrenals, <clears throat> can affect their sleep, can affect their mood, can affect their gut. No doubt about it. But what we're looking at here, and again, I can't give you right a treatment protocol. That's not how this works. I can't, I can't uh, do those things, certainly over a podcast. But of course, I had a two and five-year-old once. Uh, they're now six and eight. So I've been through all of this myself. Um, the multi is great. I don't recommend just EHEA. I would use the omega-3 um, liquid support that we offer um, for sure because you can just use a quarter to a half a teaspoon with kids. It's so easy to, to mix in with some food. You could do like a quarter of a teaspoon with your two-year-old and a half a teaspoon if you want it with your five-year-old. Um, daily probiotic support is great. But for the winter time, they may need to increase their zinc, vitamin C, and definitely vitamin D3. So what I do for my girls uh, is about 500 uh, milligrams of vitamin C. That's a half a gram during the winter, uh, anywhere from 250 milligrams to a half a gram. So that's what I use. Um, their zinc, <clears throat> it's small. It's not a lot, about seven and a half milligrams. So they get a small amount of zinc and uh, their vitamin D3 is at 1000 I use. So that's what I do for my daughters. And then um, please do look up my viral protocols, my immune protocols for children. And I think that'll be really helpful. So again, you can just you, you can go to cabralsupportgroup.com and just say, what is Dr. Cabral's podcast on children's immune protocol? It's completely free. I give you exactly what I do, and you can just copy it for your kids as well. So best of luck, Sarah. And um, I know that you'll be able to, to tailor this in and uh, just making sure that you're reducing dairy and a lot of the other mucus-producing based foods as well. All right? All right. Ron's up. Hi, I've been chronically ill for 30 years. I'm 59 years old, male, been clinics all over in different treatments. I've come to the conclusion I have a deep fungus infection in blood and organs. I've heard there is no cure for that, only management. I would like not to believe that and would like your opinion if you are looking for a challenging case it has arrived. Ron, uh, we, we live for challenging cases. It's what we do. We don't get the easy cases, that's for sure. So here's the thing. Please don't listen to anybody when they tell you that it's not curable, that you could only manage a disease. I was told that as well. No such thing as being able to reverse Addison's. No such thing as reversing POTS. No such thing as reversing this, that, and the other thing, right? Well, here I am today. So maybe it was just me or maybe it's the case for everyone. So please don't listen um, to that for sure. Um, you, I mean, you need to figure out the, the bottom, you know, the reason why, right? So like, what is the reason why? And, and let's say that it is um, really this fungus infection that's, that's affecting everything. That, it might be true. This, that's for sure it could be. Um, you'll be able to find if it's fungal or yeast overgrowth on a uh, candida metabolic and vitamins test. You could use a backup for the stool and parasite test. You could also run the IgG food sensitivity test. Those you can do right at home. So, and that's what I would do for you. I mean, if you believe that's what it is, for sure, right, run that. But um, I would actually, if I were you, I would run the big five and I would run the stool, uh, which is the bacteria and parasite test. So you run the big five plus that, I mean, the sky's the limit. If you want to run a toxicity test, you could run that. If you want to run a additional heavy metals test, you could run that. So I don't know exactly what's going on with you because you just said you're chronically ill. But remember, um, again, chronically ill uh, doesn't mean that you can't get better. And if you've been ill for 30 years, I just don't want to say you're going to get better overnight. It's probably going to take four to six months to begin to rebalance the body. But, you know, it's worth it. You're 59 years young and uh, you have at least another 20, 30 years ahead of you, right? That would make you 80, 90 years old. So that's not out of the realm. Like, I mean, like you fix this for sure. When I look at it, you, uh, you've got a lot of life to live. And, um, and, and so work with a local functional medicine doctor, an integrative health practitioner level two, or you can, um, of course, run these labs uh, or work with our private health coaching team uh, right at equilibriumnutrition.com. All right, so Ron, whatever works best for you, again, we're here to help. All right, Lara is up next. Hi, Dr. Brawl. I'm wondering what you think about face mapping. Do the spots or redness, sometimes even something resembling a rash, depending on where the face it always shows, really tell you what is most wrong with you inside, like which organs are having the most trouble working properly, et cetera. 
I've seen it on social media several times now, and I'm wondering if there's any significance there. Thank you and lots of love to you, your family, and all your listeners. Happy healing, everyone. Thank you, Lara. That's appreciate that. That's kind of you. So there is a lot of truth to it. Um, I've done I've done podcasts on facial diagnosis. I've done podcasts on tongue diagnosis. I've done podcasts on yeah, what your face says about what your lips say about you. So definitely check out those podcasts. And again, if you ever can't find a podcast after searching, so first search for it at stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts. And then if you ever can't find the one on the nails, the tongue, the face, uh, the lips, then just ask the community at cabralsupportgroup.com. They'll, they'll, they'll show you where it is for sure. There's 10,000 of us strong right now. Um, okay, so yes, there's truth to it, but certainly that would be my, not my only methodology of figuring out what's wrong with someone. So um, keep in mind, uh, back in the day when I was in school, I studied iridology. So iridology was the study of the iris, right? So the colored part of your eye is called your iris. And we would look deep inside of someone's iris. I learned this from Dr. Bernard Jensen and the, the courses and certifications based on that. And there's actually areas of your eye that correlate with all the different organs and systems of your body. Pretty amazing stuff. Really enjoyed looking at that. And when I was in private practice, not virtual, um, I would absolutely use that as part of my part of my uh, assessment toolbox. But that was never the only thing. I also looked at people's blood under a microscope, but that was not my only thing. And then I learned about cell salts, right? So I learned about Schussler, Schussler, I believe that's the name. I've been a little bit now. Um, and all the different areas that uh, relates to in the body. But Again, take all of it with a grain of salt. The very best thing that you can do is use that along with functional medicine lab testing. So if you're seeing acne around the chin, maybe it's high levels of estrogen or testosterone. Run a lab, stress hormones, mood and metabolism. If you see acne on the cheeks, maybe it is a digestive issue. Uh, run a candida metabolic and vitamins test. Uh, if you see acne on the forehead, maybe it's parasites. Run a... Uh, bacteria and parasite stool test, right? So it's like, yes, use all of that, but then then assess. Um, if you see lines on the ears, maybe it's low silica or maybe it's other minerals. So uh, if you see the missing edge of the eyebrow, it could be low thyroid. So again, good. If you think it's low thyroid, run the stress hormones, mood and metabolism test. Don't guess, test. That's what it's all about. Thank you though. Uh, really great question. And um, thank you for allowing me to, to talk about some of the things I don't get to talk about as much. I love talking about iridology. I love talking about cell salts. Like these are all things that uh, I studied and I'm very proud to study. Even if I don't use them in my practice right now, I'm proud to have studied cell salts and Bach flower remedies and, um, you know, all these things. I mean, again, like that was a part of my, my knowledge base. And just because I don't use it doesn't mean that I can't kind of draw on that from time to time. Paul is up. Hi, Dr. Brawl. I'm a level two IHP student and absolutely loving it. I love how it's not only teaching, but you also share a lot of personal things and it gives the course so much life. Thank you, Paula. I'm not sure that makes a lot of sense, but hopefully it does. Huh? No, it does. I mean, I, I share a lot of personal stories inside of IHP and I only do that inside of IHP because the people there are dedicated basically to help healing themselves and healing others. And so it's kind of an even more unique group. And so I kind of open up a little bit more there about some personal stuff because I'm, I'm, I'd say I'm a little bit more of a private kind of guy. Anyway, uh, Paula's wondering if you could share a little bit about your experience formulating products for Equilibrium. I'm interested in doing something very similar and would love if you could shed some light on the topic. Given your background in biochemistry, I'm sure you already had a good knowledge in terms of what ingredients to use, but what about the specific amounts of each vitamin, herb, and mineral? Is this something you did by yourself or did you get help from a chemist? I want to learn from the best, so this is why I'm asking you. I just want something to help me get started. Uh, thank you so much. Okay, Paula. So, um, yeah, I mean, I can answer this very straightforward. So I've been using nutritional supplements since 1995, 96. Yeah, 1995, 1996. Okay. Didn't know much about it then, but I loved it. And I started to study all the time about nutritional supplements. And here's why. When I was very, very sick, I began to look into uh, other forms of health. Nutrition and supplements were part of that. I started taking a few nutritional supplements and they gave me a little bit of my life back. Didn't fix things, but dramatically better when I was on them than not on them. And I said, whoa, there must be something to this. 
I stopped the supplements because I kind of ran out of money. And when I didn't use them, I started to relapse a bit. I started to feel even worse. It didn't get better just from them, but started to feel worse. So I go back on them and, whoa, I got a little bit of boost in mood and energy. So that was really important to, to look at. So I started continuing to study. That was a big thing. I mean, I've always studied it for sure, but I don't, I don't want to go down the path too much. But I started using all sorts of different products. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of different brands. And so I could see what worked and what didn't work. And um, I use functional medicine-based brands um, since maybe like 2007. So that's like the Pures and the Thorns and the Integrative Therapeutics, like real brands that you can trust, all right? So then I said, okay, I want to formulate my own products because not all of them, by the way, we still use another 50, 60 plus products in our private practice. You just don't see them on our website because they're one-offs and they're, they're through a private uh, third-party service, which allows people to know that they're getting good quality products that are not equilibrium nutrition. But anyway, um, the main ones I wanted to formulate were something that weren't in the marketplace, like especially the daily nutritional support. It didn't exist. The Dr. Ball Detox didn't exist. I used to have to use a half a dozen to a dozen other products. So the way that I formulated them was to know the ingredients that I wanted from Ayurvedic medicine. Remember, I studied many, many years Ayurvedic medicine, TCM, and then I studied orthomolecular medicine uh, with, uh, or reading the books of Andrew Saul, Linus Pauline, uh, many others. So what I did was I then looked at the research and I looked up the research and I said, okay, based on this ingredient, this is the effect that I want. Here's the clinical dosage. And so that's what I did. It's a lot of work, but that's how you get the best quality products. So I chose the best quality ingredient at the dose based on clinical research and, uh, and then also what I knew worked in practice because I was in private practice. And so that was, I mean, a pretty phenomenal, I mean, that was, it's a, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed doing that. And I still do it to this day. I mean, we're creating a whole anti-aging line that nobody knows about. And we've been doing that now for, well, Fatlocity took 18 months. Our anti-aging line is going to take about 18 months. So it's a long time because you partner with, um, well, you have to partner with basically ingredient manufacturers to make sure you're getting the good stuff. And then formulations take 14 to 16 weeks. Uh, there's so much devious stuff going on right now with people just offering to start their supplement business, white label their products, and it's all junk. I would never recommend it. You put it in your body. <clears throat> Not a good idea. And then let me just give one more caveat. Then about a year ago, a little over that now, I hired a, um, I call him a chief formulator or a scientist for our team. So now I go and like for Fatlocity and for all the anti-aging line, I choose all of the things that I want, that I know work, that I've studied. And I ask our I call him our scientist, our chief formulator, because that's, that's what his degree's in, to go and pull through the research himself to do that. So now I choose, and then I'm, all, I'm asking, obviously, for input as well, and then they back it up with the clinical research at that dosage. So that's a little method behind the madness. There's a lot that goes into it. The, again, functional medicine is very different than the products that you see on Amazon from like random companies. And again, no disrespect, but there's no way that you should be choosing the cheapest nutritional supplement. It typically means it's from very cheap ingredients. Our products typically cost more to make than other products they even like sell them at. They're just selling such cheap ingredients that don't have the clinical effectiveness behind them. So I refuse to do that. Every product that I make, I would put in my body and I use with myself and my family. I mean, that's the truth. I always tell people and joke around, I've used every product Equilibrium Nutrition makes uh, except for anything to do with female hormones. That, that's about it. I've used everything else uh, completely and, and I'm 100% stand by it. Uh, my wife uses them. I use them. I give them to my parents used in my private practice before anybody even knew about equilibrium nutrition. So thank you, Paula, for writing in. Uh, best of luck. Uh, appreciate you being a part of IHP. All right, everyone, that is our second host call of the weekend. I uh, apologize. Today was episode 1717. Uh, if you ever want to see the video, um, if you want to follow along with all the questions, well, there it is. So tomorrow we'll be back with our Mindset and Motivation Monday. I look forward to chatting with you then. I hope that you have an amazing weekend. And of course, if this podcast was helpful, do feel free to share it with anyone you believe it could serve. Take care. Take care.